Sword of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow, and it is a critic of thought and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself or put unto God a workman that readeth not to be ashamed, accurately handling the word of truth. As we have been noticing the things that Satan, which is very much Ptolemic to its nature, as such rising false teachers and false cults who are in return polemistic in their attitude and the way they claim about the divinity and the deity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, making themselves as a resource of false mysticism derived, they think, as divine guidance, but rather in return, it is a source of satanic teaching for them, wherewith devouring the flock as much as it can through a pastor teacher by not providing right Bible doctrine and devouring the mankind to hell like a roaring lion by not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. It has been our duty as such we could make them to understand what is a dichotomous in nature and what is a trichotomous in nature. What is a rational species in the flesh to the first Adam who has been created from the earth, was taken life from God. And what is the kinekatesis of the new spiritual species in Christ, of this unique dispensation of the church age, after the first advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ upon this earth in his hypostatic union, who came to save the sinful mankind by grace, by faith alone in Christ alone, so that by believing in him we might have life eternal, and the things written and kept for us as a record of testimony which bears a witness and countersign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that is his mind and his mind is our life and his life is in his word and his word could be taught by a right pastor teacher who teaches you the word from the original language of the scriptures of categorical, exegetical and biblical studies and apart from that no matter what you think being a dichotomous in nature, you can never come to know the depth of the scripture because as such, a dichotomy person is not only spiritually lame, but is spiritually dead. And the polemic, brilliant aspect of counterfeiting subterfuge of Satan makes you all to be away by not making you to believe in the unique person or uniquely born our monegine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, but in rather you all can think that you can lower the standards of Christ to a human attitude so that you can be saved by your own works. You can be saved by a false religion. You can be saved by a false propaganda, as such as even false powers. Know your enemy. The depths of enemy are too vast. Your finite mind cannot comprehend it. The two people, were, when they were walking on the way, Lord Jesus Christ, after his resurrection, appeared unto them. And he opened unto them the scriptures and showed forth the salvation way. The revealing ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is given by God the Father to show forth only to him to whom Lord seems fit. That's what it stands written in Matthew 11, 27. The same thing in Matthew 13, 11, it stands written, These things are been given unto the babes, but not to the wise men. But the people think of this world, they are wise enough to understand the scriptures. They are wise enough to understand the context. They are wise enough, so much so, that they can easily discern what is right and what is wrong. No, until and unless you have been born again, you cannot even get a pluck, or you cannot even know what exactly is there in the Bible doctrine, because... The spiritual food and the Bible is kept only for a believer. It is never for an unbeliever. And as long as you think you are just using blasphemous assumptions upon the Lord, 
saying that he is not Lord and he is not your Savior. That's what your mind can be tuned by satanic forces or by satanic doctrines for you so that you should not be saved. In return, if you look into a simple analogy of a structure, as a son obeys the father, as such when Christ told in the form of an anthropomorphism of a filial relationship clad in human nature that I have to obey my father, saying that I have to be subjection to my high authority and I have to honor him. That's what the second commandment says in the Bible of the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament law. Honor your father and mother. If the children of Muslims are born to the father called as Abraham, then where is the honor of their father? Where is the honor of their nation to which Abraham believed for his salvation, saying and indicating that he is going to wait for a new heaven and the new earth, wherewith God is the founder of that city? When Abraham believed for his salvation upon the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved upon the divine imputed righteousness given to them, how much more you, being a Muslim, ought to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ? As a son honors his father, where is the honor that are giving to your father called as Abraham, who have in return born to Hagar and Kethura? If you think your origin is not through Abraham, then God help you to find your origin from where you are. The Bible dogmatically claims who is your father. Who are the children of these Arabites? Who have they have come up? But the problem with these people is the Satan is darkening their mind. The Satan is making them not to understand, not to comprehend the things because Satan has blinded your eyes not to look to the true gospel, not to understand the true gospel. In fact, even as such, not to know the truth. Because doing God's will is knowing the truth. And where there is no God's will, there is a lie. And Satan is a father of lies right from the beginning of the creation. Wherewith it deceived Adam and Eve in which a prehistoric trail of angelic conflict was been ruled out. And Satan, which wanted to be out of that punishment given in Matthew 25, 41, challenges and impugns the character of Lord, but Lord gave a case for it, making every believer as a witness for persecution after the first advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, wherewith the strategic victory of our Lord has been done on the cross and strategic defeat of Satan has been done away on the cross. And it is a duty of the believer whether he chooses Christ or not. It is a duty of the believer whether he grows up in Bible doctrine or he follows to the satanic core of apostate teachers and lives out Bible doctrine. Now we have only one thing to be determined, whether you believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ as a member of a human race for your salvation or not. And after believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have only one thing, whether you take Bible doctrine as number one priority, because a ritual without reality is meaningless. As such, your spiritual life without Bible doctrine is meaningless. And as long as apostate leaders have been there, Satan uses them very falsely, even as such, lures the believer out of the word to derail them from the grace which is and which can be learnt only through Bible doctrine and makes them a replacement of pseudo-spiritual gifts as such, miracles, healings and tongues, and makes them to walk at the dumb beat, if not the death beat, of satanic punishment, who are out of fellowship, who do not know the truth. But God has an ordained SOP, wherewith which is consistent to his mind, wherewith which it is holy according to Lord's holy mind. And the SOP for the believer is to confess his sins as per 1 John 1, 9, and be in a fellowship with him, and learn the word of the Lord, because in this unique dispensation of the church age, every believer is Shekinah, and is called as Naon in the Greek, that is, a dwelling place made unto the Lord wherewith he is not a rational species as such of the Old Testament times, but rather he is a spiritual species of this era, of this time of Christendom, of this age of church age. In this grace period, graciously given to you, the unique and great privileges never ever given to every believer, if not even in the past or in the future will ever be given. 
you as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ has been mandated to grow upon, to feed upon Bible doctrine and to live a life as a corporate witness being married and as an individual witness being unmarried to the maximum glorification unto the Lord by cracking the maturity barrier and once you crack the maturity barrier of Bible doctrine so that you can be spiritually self esteemed or self-sustained and spiritual autonomy is a government and spiritual maturity is a growth of your status as long as you survive in Bible doctrine under the indwelling controlling mental ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and a right pastor teacher who is going to teach you Bible doctrine through exegesis categorical and biblical isagogical study of the subject because the divine immortal soul which has been given to you is far more important for you to know and to realize the truth the Bible doctrine very clearly tells to the human race. For by the first Adam came sin and came death. By his negative volition not to hear gospel, not to obey the word, not to follow the test kept for him in the garden of Eden. But whereas by the second Adam or the last Adam, who is called as Christ, came life to those spiritually who has been died in our behalf, as a substitute of a spiritual death, that now believing in Him, we as a believers in the Lord Jesus Christ could attain a life, a life called a spiritual life on this earth while we are living, and a life called as eternal life which we have in heaven at the moment of salvation itself by faith alone in Christ alone, and in a way of making it to understand in a non meritorious system of perception which is called as faith, God has used it as a metaphors for both of eating and drinking. Eating meant to say it is quite eligible for any sort of type of a human race you name. Moral, immoral, degenerated one, or Christian immoral degenerated one, or Christian moral degenerated one, or any member of the human race whom you name, they have an ability to eat. Even as such, drinking is an aspect for them they have an ability to drink, not any such kind of alcohol, but drinking in the sense as a metaphor, representing the covenant of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that drinking which has been given as only one of the odd rituals in this New Testament time, called as taking your communion. That means first eating to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and drinking to follow the covenant, saying that until and unless you have the drink, you do not have a life wherewith God wants you to live. And these things will never be revealed to a dead person who is spiritually dead, who is dichotomous in nature, who possesses only a body and soul. As by the first Adam, sin entered and death came upon all mankind. The first thing why a human race member is called as a dichotomy because he is physically alive and the divine imputation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says at the moment of physical birth when spiritual when the soul has been imputed at the same time Adam's original sin will also be imputed as for the divine imputed righteousness of Lord kept upon him wherewith what the righteousness demands justice acts to execute and the justice and the righteousness of Lord demands death because of the Adam's original sin which has been passed on through each and every male or female who have been born through copulation over a man and a woman that's why Christ has been called as a virgin birth in the way he doesn't possess the old sin nature he has been born out of sin nature and the virgin birth will be believed even by the Muslims. They dedicate a whole chapter to Mary Mother and they even dedicate a whole chapter to Christ in their Quran. And when they believe upon the virgin birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, why they are not able to understand this mechanics as such? Why wait? But 23 chromosomes provided by man and 23 chromosomes provided by woman forms a zygote. And the old sin nature is passed down by a man. But whereas for Christ, the 23 chromosomes have been provided instantaneously by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And that's why it's called as a monogene. In the Greek it meant to say, the only eligible one out of sin nature, without blame, without spot, without sin, who is there for us to be delivered as 
out of the slave market of sin. And in the slave market of sin, it includes even each and every so-called great religion god for them. Like the Buddhist, like the Mahmadinim, if not like the Sai, what they call in Hindu. Every member, you name it, was been born for a creation of a man and a female, and a, a male and a woman. Every member has been there in the slave market of sin. Every member. And as long as this every member is present in the slave market of sin, there is no one eligible for you to come out of sin. It is as good as saying that they all are standing for the judgment of the Lord and how you can be thinking you could be delivered by them. It's not possible. Satan's career is ended by the first advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But still it's wagging around with its small tail power to take and to drag as many as to hell by making these unbelievers through a sect of religion known as deism, Christian science, pantheism, theosophy, even as such Islamic and Mormonism. But they fail to realize the Christ is always Christ Duque. In the Latin it meant to say Christ the ruler. The one who endured the cross. The one who dogmatically claimed in the Gospels that he is going to be suffered in Luke chapter 18. And on the third day he is going to be raised again. But I think the Muslims like this, polemists who are called themselves as an oratory. Or they are called as great orators. But I do not call them as a orator. But I do call them as a polemic which Satan is using them to use their polemic minds. We always go in for a controversy of the subject. I think these polemics have not read what clearly written in the Bible, stating that Christ is the man who is going to suffer on the cross for three days. And as such, even given as an example of Jonah, saying that as Jonah was in the belly of a living flesh, for three days and three nights, even Christ is going to be for three days and three nights, and it is not Good Friday as many practice it, without having proper understanding of the word of the language, but it is sharp to be Good Wednesday. It was Christ who crucified on the Wednesday and got resurrected on the very early hours of the Sunday. But the Roman Catholicism, or the way this paganic worships they have been come up, stating that it is Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Even as such, any person, if you could ask, a day is made up of 24 hours. Even as such, Christ clearly told, three days and three nights. He just didn't say three days or three nights. He said three days and three nights. And that point is literally 24 hours. And Christ was crucified on Wednesday. If there is any such kind of a thing, it ought to be a good Wednesday, but it is not Good Friday. Even there, if you could find an error, maybe these Muslims or unbelievers, even as such, not only Muslims or Mormonisms or anyone who is following, thinking that if it is Good Friday, then how Christ was raised after the third day, it has to be somewhere around Monday or Tuesday's resurrection. But I always urge my believers who are preaching the word of the Lord, to have an accurate exegesis of Bible doctrine, to know the exact isagogical background of that time, and to know the accurate context of the subject of categorical study with various proofs of the scriptures, and rightly discern the word of the Lord, and give maximum glorification through honoring the Yahweh of hosts. If you really fear him, and if he really is your terror, if he really is your dread, then you will sit and study Bible doctrine as a pastor teacher and rightly discern the word from the original language of the scriptures. That's what your failure to understand the truth raises such kind of cults to use their polemic nature, who themselves they are blinded and spiritually dead. They do not want to know the truth. Satan is very genius and very clever as such to raise such kind of cults. But you as a believer, being, thinking, greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world, ought to be much more brilliant than Satan. Satan's attitude is so clever, that it is so genius. The world in which 
the cosmic system has been called the satan's orderly cohesive and multifaceted system of thinking which includes a purpose a strategy a structure of authority designed to subvert the human race and control the world in which now he rules that's why satan rises up many false preachers and many polemic leaders as such as this zakir naik or sheikh hamad didad even as such it blinds the men by following the morality of standards as buddhism or through the pantheism as morally well in indians as well as such in any other part of the world wherein blinding their eyes that being you a good moral standard is what it yields to you and not to be a distrust in the christianity as such that you have only one good work but depending upon your good works you will be saved it has even raised a cult up to such an extent that there is nothing to do with god called as sin and evil god has just created man and it's left and after their death they are going to perish it off that's it and there is no account of a soul and there is no account of a spirit this is what the multifaceted thinking of satan is it uses deism it uses christian apologetics it uses christian science it uses theosophy as such to prove its context of the subject because the cohesive and the orderly multifaceted system of thinking which includes a purpose a strategy and a structure of authority by satan designed to subvert the human race and control the world in which he now rules and the whole purpose of it is to devour and to take as a roaring lion as many as it can to hell no matter how much we scream and tell to them no matter we give such kind of a lengthy discourses to the unbelievers to believe upon the lord jesus christ if it were not god's will for them to be saved it is left to their own free volition because lord has said the volition is your deciding factor whether your attitude towards christ or whether your attitude to reject christ the same volition given to a believer after believing in the lord jesus christ who is trichotomous in nature your volition towards bible doctrine to grow up in his word and not to follow the easy luring away of satan derailing you from the word so that as long as you're out of the truth you are not free but you are still being entangled in the cosmic system of thinking of satan and ruining your life and satan doesn't want any believer to learn bible doctrine as such because satan's attitude is always to deceive mankind no matter you may be born again no matter you may be regenerated one but satan doesn't want you to grow up in bible doctrine and as long as you have been devoured of bible doctrine in this unique dispensation of the church age wherein your body is a shikana glory is a temple of sanctuary wherein if you go and crack the maturity barrier your name will be recorded and kept as a pillar in the history of angelic conflict and you in return answer to the angels who have been fallen saying that you were fools not to believe in the gospel you were fools not to take the solution given given for you by lord but rather you obeyed you are ruler called as satan in fact as such even first peter 1 to 12 says satan is the fallen angels are rubber necking as such to know what exactly the pulpit will teach and the church being a manifold wisdom of god which will not only teach to the human race but in rather it will even teach the principalities and powers of this fallen race and the world is a stadium now and the fallen angels are on the one end and the elect angels are on the one end and the believer whenever he believes in the lord jesus christ the elect angels will cheer up and whenever a believer fails to reject upon whenever a believer fails to learn bible doctrine the satanic angels will react the fallen angels will react stating that they are happy stating that the believer though has been given such a tantamount a montonious worth of assets to him which are invisible has not made any use of it he is such a fool because he doesn't know 1 john 4:4 he doesn't know zechariah 46b 
in return he doesn't know Exodus 15:18. 1 John 4 4 states greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world the one who is in you is Lord Jesus Christ and Zechariah 4 6 b it says it is not in valor nor in vigor but it is only by the Spirit of the Lord that the things have to be made for you to be known. And it is He who is going to reign forever and forever. Says Exodus 15:18. When Lord Jesus Christ dogmatically claimed and told to us the things very clearly, in the case of Simon the Bar John, the son of Jonah, saying, It is not any flesh and blood as revealed to you, but it is the Spirit. And until and unless any member of the human race has been spiritually born, he can never know the truth. He is not even eligible to see the things in the Bible, far less he thinks, he knows and he understands, like a polemist, he comes and he claims the divinity and the deity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A spiritually decent person is capable of learning to the growth of spiritual maturity only number one when he believes in the salvation work even as such used as a metaphor for them eating and drinking to make a sense that any member of the human race is capable of believing in the lord jesus christ by faith alone in christ alone which is a non-meritorious system of perception and which it doesn't demand anything apart from your faith a faith which needs no faith at all for you to believe in your non-meritorial system of perception of the thinking of your soul when your logical reasons are right. When you're out of such kind of a coercive, multifaceted thinking of Satan, because the satanic nature is so vast, this alternatives to the perfect plan of God is the classroom for communicating Satan's false doctrine. Satan uses religion as its ace trump card. Satan is so clever, it blinds your eyes, not to know as such what is your soul. Not to know as such what is the difference between a soul and a spirit. That's what the word of the Lord says in Hebrews 4.12. It is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. It is a sharper than any two-edged sword, which divides asunder between a soul and a spirit. Its Bible doctrine alone can teach you what is a soul and what is a spirit. And for you as such who are dichotomous in nature, who do not know what is the image of God, and who do not know what are the breath of lives that have been breathed into the nostrils of Adam, the first person, and for which you have been told, to die you shall die, or dying you shall die. For your information, the soul is an immortal, immaterial essence of man that compromises the real person. Because many people who fail to believe in this, Many people who do not have a proper understanding of such kind of things easily fail to discern the truth. These are the people who have been blinded by Satan, not even to know what is a soul, far less who try to understand what is a spirit, far less who want to discern what is truth and what is wrong, but rather in the blindness of their, of their spiritual death. They think they can understand Lord, but it's not possible for them. Thus, the soul is the immortal. The soul is immortal, immaterial essence of man that compromises the real person, giving him rational, moral, and relational capacities. The morality of a Christian believer is not that is there always in your soul, but it is the virtue which Lord demands through you. The virtue of a medicine is best when it heals. Likewise, the virtue of a Christian believer is what? Is Bible doctrine, which provides solution to each and everything, not only to his manner of life upon this earth, even in the angelic conflict as such, to live behind for him a wealth of heavenly realm, wherewith he could be gained with such kind of an attitude, 
wherewith he can have such kind of a results in the heaven, provided he grows up in Bible doctrine. It's not morality as many members of the human race of pastor teachers who call themselves as pastors are teaching. Morality is even there for an unbeliever as too. It is the virtue which the virtue has been designed by Bible doctrine for the believer. And that has been kept only for a believer in Bible doctrine. The spiritual manna of virtue given only to a believer who learns Bible doctrine more than the physical food he eats and the physical breath he takes. The soul which even has been given to an unbeliever possesses a rational, moral, and relational capacities. Reflecting the image of God as told in Genesis 1.27, let us create man in our own image. The soul consists of number one, self-consciousness. Awareness of your own self-existence. That's what even Zachary Mike is aware of him own self. Even as such, the other religion leaders who are following, even as such, even the apostate leaders in Christendom they are following, they have a self-consciousness. That's what we say, do you not have guilt of your consciousness as such? That means you meant to say, are you not ashamed of your consciousness? Are you not aware that you are answerable to the things that you are performing? The same thing which Lord has dogmatically told for us in Jeremiah chapter 23. The pastors are devouring my flock. The shepherds to whom I have committed my flock to be taught. They are treading down upon the flock. They are devouring it. And if you are having a conscience enough in this church age, and if you are not able to discern of your self own existence, that you have to be a testimony abiding to the truth, then be aware of yourself and know that you are answerable to the Lord at the judgment throne of Christ. In such a such a manner where Christ has made a record of Captain them and told that I would require of them who do not believe in this great prophet. I would require of them, if you as a pastor teacher, you are not doing your work accurately as Lord demands you to be done. By representing the false things of the word, you are making the flock to follow the false powers and false religion, things of the demand possessed mind, a demonic influence mind, and making the believers to be lured off from the word, even as such, many believers do not know that they are being indwelled by Lord God, the Holy Spirit as such. Because a pastor, teacher who calls himself as a pastor over their flock, doesn't want them to know that a believer is never demon-possessed. Because if he makes them to know, then this guy rules out, and the people do not obey him, and he loses out his income of his lust. Because they do not fear him. They do not get him the offerings. They do not obey his word. And even as such, such a kind of an apostate leaders are handling the things in the TV that they are saying a demonic possession is there for the believer because he has not been baptized by God the Holy Spirit. What a foolish people they are not to discern the word accurately. Your baptism of Lord God the Holy Spirit happens to you without your baptism. In water as such. As you think. Because it is at the moment of your salvation through faith alone in Christ alone. Lord God the Holy Spirit takes you and joins you into the royal family of God. And you by yourself by any way you cannot enter into that unity of baptism. It is the work of God the Holy Spirit to unite you into that great royal family of God. Into the family of Trinity. And these people foolishly are and in return devouring them of the truth. That's why it is one of the coercive, multifaceted thinking of Satan to keep away the believers from Bible doctrine. And that's why it has many false teachers who have come up. And if you are self-existence and if you are aware of your own existence, be aware. Number one, before you come to the pulpit ministry, have you read the Bible? If it is more for you on my demand, have you read the Bible at least once on your knees? 
If I such, if it is more for you, have a written Bible at least once on your knees to come and to know the truth. Even as such, if it is more for you, have you read the Bible in the original language of the scriptures? If you are not aware of all these things, then the one who is ignorant of Acts 20, 26, 27, and 28, do not enter the ministry of pulpit to preach the word. Because no matter your divine soul has a self-consciousness in the image of God created for you, and you have to be answerable for that. That's why James 3, 1 and 2 tells to us, on the contrary, not many of them become preachers for you because you are having tough judgment kept for you. On the other hand, 2 Timothy 2.15 told by Apostle Paul in his dying declaration of the epistle, written to pastors, study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, the one who accurately handles the word of the truth. The same thing in 2 Timothy 4, 2, he tells to us, Caruso thon logon in the Greek, preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season, as such your words could be assault, that means Bible doctrine, to satisfy the thirst and hunger of, of them who hear, and them they could be assured of their salvation. That's what our duty is being done here, to teach these unbelievers as such, and even to know and to know that, the responsibility of the pastor teachers kept upon them. So the number one, the soul conscious of self-consciousness. Number two, it gives the great thing called as mentality, ability to think. Christianity begins at thinking. If you do not think, you do not have Christianity. Number three, it's a volition, ability to choose. Number four, you're conscious, you're called as norms and standards. And number five, emotion. But it doesn't have in God, it has been given to us as a man. An emotion to appreciate your salvation. An emotion to appreciate your free will unto God. An emotion you appreciate Bible doctrine. An emotion you take, which is essential for you to, to know and to get your salvation done. And number six of the soul is your old sin nature. The old sin nature were with the replacement of this spirit of your spiritual life after Adam sinned was being given and replaced so that being dead spiritually not physically after the moment he ate the fruit it has been taken care of by the old sin nature and these unbelievers who do not know this who do not know what is soul who do not know what whether they possess human spirit or not they are thinking themselves they know Bible doctrine they can rip out of the context of the subject and come and teach the truth which is not at all right and which is not at all in accord to Bible doctrine. That's what the offensive strategy of Satan is to make them not to know the truth. And this Zakir Naik, Sheikh Ahmad Didar and others as such who fail to realize the importance of Bible doctrine, who fail to know the truth, are making themselves as an error to such kind of a core of an extension that they are leading millions and millions and millions of Muslims into hell by not being aware that Satan uses polemic, blasphemous nature which it thinks it is brilliant but in return it is blasphemous. He contends at the trial of his angelic conflict that God cannot be loving and just at the same time. That's what the sword is falling between the two ends. How can God be love and how can God be just at the same time? God is love to save the sinful mankind at the same time if they fail to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ he is just to his character which is solidatory to its God's attributes. The God's attributes, what we call as an essence box. That's what it stands written, all have sinned and come short of the essence box of the Lord. God will never act independent of its solidary nature to his essence, to his attributes. His essence, his love, his essence is even as such righteous and justice. 
what the righteousness of Lord demands, justice has to execute. And the righteousness of the Lord, which demanded for Adam, was spiritual death. The redemption and the reconciliation and the reputation of such were with Christ set man free again by making a solution for them so that they can in return be saved by believing the gospel, by believing the same work which the Savior has done for Adam is what the resolution solution for an Adam at the time in the Garden of Eden and he accepted it but the Satan till today has rejected it that is the reason the judgment has been passed in Matthew 25 41 that they shall be put into the lake of the fire and many people who do not have an, an, an understanding of the subject through isagoical, categorical and exegetical study they think that these things of gap theory or XYZ or dispensations are not there. When Christ himself has made written through Apostle Paul, stating in Ephesians and Colossians, according to the grace given to me in this dispensation that I am a preacher for you, the people are failing to understand such kind of things. But in rather they are making an error of the understanding of the subject. The Bible speaks of more than one heaven or with Christ has passed but the translation has been said in the English God created in the beginning the heaven and the earth likewise there are many errors to be known that's not possible in the English but that's possible only in the original language of the scriptures and the heavens which Bible represents there are three the third heaven is called as the abode place the second heaven is called as a celestial being and the first heaven is called the atmosphere where we are surviving right now and this is God's unfailing, impersonal love towards mankind so that once again the renovation of this earth could happen and God replaced man on this earth so that by placing man on this earth they could know the things that the Satan could learn from him that what the error they have done is wrong. And in God's essence, in His grace, what He has provided for us as salvation is right. And to renovate that, he has created mankind here to resolve this angelic conflict. And God essence being divine in essence, in his nature or essential being. Essence means God's inner or intrinsic nature, true substance, a personal qualities or attributes. Divine essence is compromised of ten attributes of all, which are absolute and which all are eternal and which all are unchangeable and can never be separated from the whole of his being. And they are the righteousness called as sovereignty, righteousness, justice, love, eternal life, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient, immutability, and veracity. This is what his essence is. And his love at the same time and his justice are not solidary. God has to be solidary enough to his God's essence and God's attributes wherewith Satan challenged the character of God to make him, to make the things for him, saying that how it is God your love and you can put your loving creatures into the hell. But God said, no, it is not me who is going to answer you back. It is a lower creation than you is going to answer you back. And that lower creation is what God created man. Man was created a lower creature than the angels who are limited in strength, intelligence and mobility. His very existence will provide evidence, arguments and precedence for the rejection of Satan's appeal. And man was God's answer to Satan, wherewith it challenged the character of God. And people who are unable to ignore this angelic mutiny, God convened a trial of the offenders. Many of the people failed and even not even know the truth of angelic conflict. And this is possible only by a comparison of scripture with scripture leads to this conclusion. To interpret scripture and reach a conclusion about the fact of Satan's fall or any other biblical subject, critical analysis must be used. The author, 
wherewith we have been there. Lord God, the Holy Spirit uses the right pastor teacher to use isagogical categoricals and exegesis study. And isagogic is the examination of scripture within the framework of its historical setting or prophetical environment. And categorical refers to the classification of doctrine according to subject matter. And exegetical is a grammatical, syntactical, uh, synatical, etymological, and contextual analysis of scripture from its original languages and a scriptural analysis of satan's appeal will be always presented in the bible where with when you hear and when you learn that could be profitable for you only when you're trichotomous in nature under the controlling mental ministry of lord god the holy spirit and as long as you are dichotomous in nature no doubt you may be thinking that you can learn Bible doctrine, that you can know the truth, but it can never happen to you. You can never learn the truth, nor you can even come to know what exactly is the source of biblical doctrine kept for you. Because a physically alive can eat a physical food. A, phys a spiritually alive person can eat only the spiritual food. And Bible doctrine is for the believers, and it's never for the unbelievers like you who do not know. But Satan raises you up in such a way of polemistic manner with your errors of understanding in its multifaceted system of thinking saying that you can find your salvation by your own way by not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior and you forget that you are God's answer to Satan man was originally created as a God's answer to Satan but of course God never loses control of any situation God set the terms of Satan to be appealed God set the stage for the appeal that is the renovation of our earth God put the appeal in motion and he countered Satan's argument by initiating to the angels a grand demonstration of the perfect testimony of his justice love and righteousness which is a test case to prove that arrogance always leads to destruction and that creation can never achieve independence from the Creator. God brought another creature into the mix called as mankind. And the SOP for the believer is to confess his sins. And since the introduction is so long, to have a, to have a privacy of his prayer and look into the subject as such to answer back this cult and even as such to learn some doctrine. As the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit teaches us. Father, we are thankful for the privilege that are given to us to have fellowship with thee through thy word. We pray as we lead more and more, and as we are being given such a kind of a lengthy introduction to the subjects as such, because these people can know and realize the importance of biblical truth. Even as such, Lord, the people who are watching in YouTube, they are watching not more than 8 or 10 minutes as such. I have given so much lengthy introduction because at this introduction, without a prayer, they could know. But now in prayer, we look into your subject. Help us to learn your word more accurately, more clearly, more <coughs> eminently as such, because your word is alive and powerful and more dynamic. Wherewith it's our life, it's our source on this earth to be alive and powerful. Father, help us to do thy will as much as we can for your maximum glorification. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen. As you have been noticing the things given for us, considering the claims claimed by these satanic cults, the people who do not have a proper understanding of biblical truth, the people who do not even know the proper origin of their survival upon this earth, the people who do not even know what is the role of humanity in Satan's appeal, the people, in fact, even do not even know what is angelic conflict. It's our duty for us to tell to them, though they are spiritually dead, as much as it will be profitable for them only the source of biblical doctrine, that is gospel, so that by hearing to the good news, by believing upon the Lord Jesus Christ, they shall be made again from a trichotomy nature, from a dichotomy nature to a trichotomous one. That is after their regeneration, that is being born again. They could know how much more Satan's polemic nature is, though it is brilliant, but it is blasphemous, which contends that God cannot be a loving and just at the same time. But in rather in return it says 
confuses the character of God by seeking to elevate divine love above divine justice and righteousness. The great perpetrator of arrogance completely rejects the fact that the solidarity of God's attribute is behind everything which God thinks and does. The perfect eternal character of God cannot be unfair or prejudiced and cannot pass a false sentence. God can never compromise his righteousness and justice in order to deal with his imperfect creatures strictly out of love. That's why Lord Jesus Christ, while he was alive on this earth, was dogmatically claiming and telling to them, if I go, I'm going to send you a paraclete guide who is going to reveal and reprove you of three things, of sin, of righteousness, and of justice. Of sin because of your unbelief, which is as bad and as bold as to death of your spiritual one. Of righteousness because you do not possess the righteousness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is absolute righteousness of plus R, which will be imputed to a believer only when he believes upon the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior. And the justice of the just nature of a person, of the judgment, if you fail to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and be credited to his account as righteousness of an imputed one of absolute, if he doesn't possess that plus R, then he is going to have minus R, and which is in return death for him. That's what his righteousness and injustice are in order to deal with his imperfect creature strictly out of love. We, by creation, are imperfect. We do not have the things of eternal life given to us apart from the first Adam who lost it. That's why God says in Colossians 3.10, we have to be renewed in the image of which God created you in the beginning. The image you word used in the Greek is e icon. It meant to say the original creation where with you could be perfect. Perfect in the sense, not sinless perfection. The perfection in the sense of your maturity in the godliness of which God has kept you alive. Of your perfection in your spiritual life. Of your perfection of your maturity where with God wants you to be sandwiched in Bible doctrine. In each and every facet of your soul. In your self-consciousness, Bible doctrine. In your thinking, self-Bible doctrine. In your volition, the will which is there unto Bible doctrine. In your norms and standards, Bible doctrine. In your emotion, appreciation of Bible doctrine. And fortify your soul. And fortify your activated human spirit. Because when you die, when you stand face to face, it is your human soul and spirit which stands before the Lord. And the body goes to the mud. But the people fail to realize this. And they replace that. It is not the fortification of your soul through Bible doctrine is important. But it is the fortification of your morality, good deeds. Warwick, Isaiah said, all your good deeds in the sight of the Lord are ministers cloth, Fit for nothing. Bible, each and every word written, will never pass away unanswered. As the heaven pours out water and rain, and which doesn't go away out of this earth without wetting the land, as such is the word of the Lord and are his thoughts. They shall never return void unto the Lord without fulfilling its purpose. And Bible doctrine dogmatically claims and tells to us, all our good deeds in the sight of the Lord are ministers' cloths. And that's what Satan makes them to follow the good deeds. Even if you go and ask as a good Muslim, if not a good Islamic person, he says, my good deeds are there for me to go to, go to heaven. No, they're the sheer rut. They are not good deeds. They are ministers' cloth. Even as such, any religion, including pantheism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, or utopianism of Satan, the things of that is what? They follow by good deeds. But the good deeds in the sight of the Lord are ministers' cloth. They do not possess the righteousness of the Lord. As long as you may have the good deeds, they are minus R, relative righteousness. One's good deeds is far more morally superior than others. But in the sight of the Lord, you had to have a virtue of absolute righteousness, which will be imputed to you. Only when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what, for by one Adam, sin entered, death entered into the Lord, into the world. But by Christ the Lord, all are made alive in the Spirit. 
and you get only the difference between a soul and a spirit in Bible doctrine. Not even a good psychologist can tell you the difference between a soul and a spirit. Not even a fantastic, a brilliant, or award-winner psychologist can make a difference between a soul and a spirit. Only the Bible can teach you that. And no matter how brilliant satanic is, and its polemic nature, and it rises up such kind of false preachers or false teachers who are polemistic to the core. The battle has already been won by Lord Jesus Christ on the cross, and it's your attitude towards Lord Jesus Christ that makes the difference. Satan established an argument often used today against punishment, both human and divine. Satan is formidable and subterfuge. When Satan hurled his malicious slur, God would have been perfectly justified to immediately banish these offending agents to their fairy doom. Instead, God in his grace graciously choose to grant Satan's appeal. In, his moment, in this momentous action, God would demonstrate his perfect character while allowing Satan every opportunity to prove his own flawed case. Exactly why he did this is unknown, as scripture does not reveal his reasons. He did, however, grant the appeal for Satan. He is still at large and he is still demonstrating the evil that marks his every action. God graciously gave an appeal for Satan to be appealed. Because of his love and long-suffering and his goodness. The same thing Second Peter 3.9 says, that you have been made that none should perish, but everyone should believe upon Lord for his salvation. That is the long-suffering and the goodness of our Lord, which made Satan to appeal and to give him a chance, but it failed again. It went on to deceive Adam and Eve. And the judgment now is made sure. It was there any member of the human race who could accept the salvation work of Christ, then Satan has been hurled down. That's what it happened to Satan. The first person, Adam and Eve, accepted the solution of redemption, reconciliation, and resolution. And Satan was being proved wrong, and Satan was being hurled into the hell. But the people, the one for which God, God the Holy Spirit, is going to go to come and reprove them of the sin, to explain your sin, Sin is any mental, verbal, or overt activity that violates the character and standards of God. In your mentality, you fail to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what you violate the character and standards of God. In your verbal nature or in your overt activity, you say that you do not need a savior for you because you are quite capable of understanding the things. But the character and the standards of God demands in his solidarity of his absolute essence, of his attributes that his righteousness and justice to be satisfied. Until and unless his righteousness and justice are not satisfied, no matter how pure you are right from your beginning without Lord Jesus Christ in your life, that's what, then when you, when you do not have Lord Jesus Christ in your life, it is as good as stating that you do not possess the righteousness and justice of Lord. No matter how pure you are, you are still in the sin nature and you are spiritually dead. And your absolute standard of righteousness is possible to meet only when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. This is sin. That's what in John 16, 8 it says, of sin. Because they do not believe in me. They do not obey to come and to look the character and standards of God. They do not even try to correct. Warwick, they have come short of the glory of the essence box of the Lord. They are not there to hear such kind of things. And Satan divorced them, even as such for these unbelievers, even as such for the past teachers in the pulpit, who claim sin as any other thing apart from X, Y, Z. Of area of weakness, area of strength, antinomianism or legalism, or lasciviousness, that's what they claim as sin. But sin in the sight of the Lord towards the human race is that they fail to believe. Because mentally, verbally and overtly, they have been out of the character and standards of God. But a preacher 
an ordinary one who doesn't even know what is the difference between a sin and evil, tries to preach a sermon upon the sin. And evil encompasses the policy, purpose, and modus operandi of Satan to capture and control the human soul, establish his own millennium, and become the victor in the angelic conflict. Satan uses evil to corrupt the human race in his attempt to control the world he now rules. That's what we have been told many times. Satan, which is evil right from the beginning, the father of lies and evil, wants to control by making it not to realize that evil is the policy, purpose, and modus operandi of Satan to capture and control the human soul. That's what we have to pray for our evil nature to be gone out. That's what the psalmist prayed, the David prayed for him. Evil shall never come unto me, O Lord. Evil is your negative volition not to follow the positive volition derived for you, which are there in accord to God's mind and God's holy attitude. Evil is what you do for the sake of your lust. The lust of eye, the lust of flesh, and the pride of life. That is evil. But what is in accord for you to learn Bible doctrine is what it is good. And Satan always uses evil in this angelic conflict, the conflict which is going upon your soul, which is a deciding factor for MGG or not to be for an MGG. That's maximum glorification unto God. If you are under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is going to use you for MGG. And if you are under the old sin nature, which is there always for you in your old sin nature, because but for by one man sin entered into the world, because of him, your old sin nature is your ex-boyfriend, and your God, the Holy Spirit, which controls you, is your present husband. If you go for your ex-boyfriend, that's what evil that's what the nature of Satan is, to control and to see that you are there in such kind of an evil. Be aware, brethren, a pastor teacher who is in evil can never learn Bible doctrine. He's out of fellowship all the time, and God spanks them, as told in Hebrews 12, 6, to correct them as much as he can. And if they fail, then first they have discipline, and then they have warning discipline, and then they have sin unto death. If they fail to correct, they're losing the invisible assets of all time. They're losing the astral contract of all time, where they can never come back again to earth. But it shall be for them only as a resurrection body and as a status quo of peon and not to be ruled. So this evil nature which Satan uses as a policy and a purpose of modus operandi to destroy mankind is what are being trapped around millions and millions of believers. And this evil not only includes that, it also includes the false powers and false religions and false misguiding of the gifts of spiritual one. Though they were seized, they are still in action, they think. And miracles or healings or tongues, as such, they are failing themselves not to know the truth. The arrogance or negative volition of Adam and the woman in the Garden of Eden propelled the human race into a fall parallel to Satan's with equally disastrous consequences, condemnation from the justice of God. But God did not leave man in a hopeless condition. The love of God was clearly demonstrated even in the midst of divine judgment. God's love interceded for the man and woman with a way to redress condemnation. He provided for them and subsequently the human race a savior and salvation by grace through faith contingent on non-meritorious positive volition. That's why we have a God-honoring tenant of all time. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, uniquely born, monogene son, that whosoever believes in him shall never perish or should not perish, 
but have an everlasting life or an eternal life. The moment of Adam's fall and judgment was a moment of truth for the angels. Once again, they saw the justice of God at work. Just like Satan and his angels, man was condemned for choosing against God. Divine justice had sentenced Satan to spend eternity in the lake of fire. Man deserved the same. At would man have to join Satan? Definitely not. He could accept the solution offered by the love of God. He could believe in the promise of a Savior, Jesus Christ, who would pay the penalty for all human sin at the cross, opening the door of salvation to all mankind. As the conflict plays out against the backdrop of human history, the issue is human volition. Man inferior to angels but possessing identical free will can choose either God's grace plan of salvation or Satan's plan of condemnation. The truth is... If only one person in human history believes in Jesus Christ, the character of God and his judgment of Satan are vindicated and Satan loses the appeal. Why? Because the passage of human history demonstrates that no person or angel goes to the lake of fire except by his own negative volition. That's what it stands written in John 3.18 and John 3.36 for your information, Zakir Nayak. This salvation, in fact, has been appropriated not only by one person, but by Untold numbers of people throughout the ages, thus God reveals his perfection, fairness, love and grace towards all creatures. What then is the major issue in resolving the appeal of Satan and all fallen angels? In a word, Lord Jesus Christ. For as in Adam all die spiritually, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. Man's decision to remain in Adam under condemnation or to accept God's provision for redemption and reconciliation is the resolution. No longer under condemnation, the believer in Christ now has another option, whether or not to advance towards spiritual maturity and execute the spiritual life. Choosing the plan of God sets him apart for the highest honor and can be bestowed upon a believer to be entered as evidence against Christ. Such a believer is a witness for persecution. As the believer advances towards spiritual maturity, he gains credibility as a witness for the divine prosecutor. His maturity glorifies God and provides conclusive evidence to God's grace, love, and justice. This believer testifies to the efficacy of divine assets against all obstacles in Satan's world. When the believer in humility implements the plan of God, relying upon divine grace and power, the appeal of Satan is shown to be invalid. During his appeal, Satan and his angels watch every believer. They see the grace, mercy, and love of God by observing the volition, positive or negative, of mankind. They can understand why they are condemned as they behold human beings placing their trust in Jesus Christ, thereby demonstrating that the free will of man does not necessarily choose against God as the fallen angels did in eternity past. It is significant then that while alive on this earth every believer represents Christ as an ambassador to both man and absorbing angels this is the history of angelic creation elect and fallen angels sit in the stands of a stadium called planet earth elect angels observe and rejoice over the conversion of just one person to Christ they long to look at the gospel being spread by ambassadors for Christ Fallen angels watch and tremble when one person expresses positive volition to the gospel, is regenerated, and then advances to spiritual maturity. Regeneration is what is a theological term for spiritual birth or being born again. By the imputation of eternal life from God, at the moment of faith in Lord Jesus Christ, a regenerate person passes from spiritual death to spiritual life. That's what we have been telling to you. Convert from dichotomous nature to trichotomous one. This is the testimony that destroys God's appeal and demonstrates God's love and justice working in tandem. This is why fallen angels are organized to resist and oppose the ambassadorship of the deliverer, of the believer. The possession of volition makes every man a free agent in the devil's world. You are having a possession of your volition. You are a free agent in the devil's world. There are two decisions that impact the angelic conflict. First one, Man has an opinion either to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and inherit in eternal life or reject this salvation and reap eternal condemnation. That's what we have been telling to you, to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. Second, for a believer it is, having trusted Christ as Savior, man can continually choose to execute the plan of God or reject his plan and follow satanic malevolent agenda. This is what Satan always uses, a malevolent agenda. Each person chooses to be either a witness for the divine prosecutor or a witness on behalf of Satan's defense. Which choice do you make? 
either to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ or to reject Zachary Naik or Sheikh Ahmad Didat. Because the angelic creation which I have been read out for you now cannot be understood by you. If you are finite in mind, a spiritual mind has to design you to understand these things, not only for you when as anyone who is watching this tape. You have to be under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Even as such, if there are any pastor teachers who are trying to discern these words, should be under the controlling mental ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because these are to the maximum, to the core, for your revelation of your knowledge, that you can correct your life, not being under Satan's modus operandi of false teachings and false preachings, but rather correcting yourselves to know the truth. So you, as a being an unbeliever, what is your attitude? Whether you choose what decision you make, whether you choose to believe the salvation work for you given graciously by the unique God-man, or you reject him, the one man, the one mediator between God and man, the way, the truth, and the life, the way who dogmatically claimed me and my father are one, the way who has told to us that everything has been given to Lord Jesus Christ and is going to give it, reveal to them to only to them to whom he seems fit. And he said these things have been taught to the foolishness of this world because the foolishness of God is wiser than this world. And he said no blood and flesh can reveal it to you if it were apart from the ministry of blood God the Holy Spirit. So which choice do you make? The choice to be converted from dichotomy to trichotomous by believing the simple gospel by faith alone in Christ alone, or the choice to reject him and to be in eternal hell. And even as such for the believer, whether you want to become a witness for persecution in this angelic conflict, glorifying God, which counters Satan's plan, or you want to end up on behalf as a persecutor of a witness on Satan's behalf. Whether you can become a divine prosecutor or a witness of defense offense, of Satan, which one you want, you choose. And a pastor teacher who fails to discern these things is already in error, not knowing the creation of which God has created mankind to resolve this angelic conflict. And God, Lord Almighty, is in return intervention into the human history as such. He is an intervention into the angelic history to resolve this angelic conflict and leave behind an angelic, and leave behind a legendary impact. But as simple as for it, for the unbelievers of this Sheikh Ahmad Dida was polemistic to the core, or not orators in my sight who are just a controversial teachers of Bible doctrine, even as such of their Quran, even as such of other Muslims, even as such of a Buddhism or Hinduism for which they are teaching, which is satanic to the core. This controversies are pathetic, not to be understood. These are the men who are polemic, who are being raised by Satan to devour men. But the gospel is very simple for them, which shines even now to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ for their salvation, which is as simple by faith alone in Christ alone, that they believe upon the saving work of Lord Jesus Christ and to be saved. And as we continue tomorrow, we shall look still more further as we are going up more and more in Bible doctrine. We thank you, Father, for the place that are given to us to fellowship with you through thy word. We pray that God the Holy Spirit enlighten us to make them to understand these unbelievers that for by born Adam, death entered into the world and by in Christ all are made alive. Father, through regeneration, we have been transformed from spiritual death to spiritual alive. And many of the people, they are perishing without knowing your truth. Help us, Father, to discern them, to make them to know your Bible doctrine more accurately, more clearly, so that they can learn <coughs> as such as you have told them to walk two miles when you, walk, when you ask to walk, walk once. And it's always under the mental ministry of indwelling, controlling power of God, the Holy Spirit. It's not by valor nor in vigor, but in spirit, that we shall reign forever and forever. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.